Shortly. Members, we, now, we turn now to the Customs and Excise Bill. In accordance, thank you, in accordance with the determination of the Business Committee, the debate will be conducted on the following four themes. Information disclosure, powers and obligations, revenue and trade, and mechanics and miscellaneous. There will be no debate on clauses one, or one and two, but clause two may be referred to in relation to the commencement of provisions as they are debated. The chairperson will determine the length of the debate on each theme, so there will be no closure motions accepted. There is no limit, however, on the number of calls per member. However, the practice will continue that no more than two consecutive calls will be given per member. All questions will be put at the end of the debate. Members, we come first to the debate on information disclosure, comprising parts five, subparts five and six. Madam Chair. I call the Honourable Mika Fighter. Madam Chair, um, thank you very much. It's indeed a, a, a privilege and a pleasure to uh, oversee the ushering of this very important bill, the Customs and Exercise Bill. By way of um, opening discussion, um, Madam Chair, can I first acknowledge the former ministers, Minister the Honourable Tim McIndoe and, of course, the Honourable Maggie Barry, who definitely had a hand uh, in this bill that we are discussing tonight, Madam Chair. Um, I'm looking enthusiastically for the contributions that I know are going to appear uh, as we deal with theme by theme, um, Madam Chair. Um, despite the time, um, I know that there's going to be a lot of contribution um, given to this very important legislation. Madam Chair, this is a non-controversial uh, piece of legislation, but it's a very important piece of legislation. Uh, we are attempting to modernise the Customs and Exercise Bill, uh, which hasn't been modernised for up to 20 years. Um, and some parts of the, the Act um, is about 100 years um, uh, that hasn't been touched. So this is an attempt uh, to bring it into the modern world, uh, Madam Chair. The legislation is attempting, it will be more flexible to respond to a changing global environment and changes in business and border management practices. And the bill will balance the protection of the nation and, and with individual rights. Um, just for members' uh, inf um, information, the bill carries over most of the current Act, with, of course, the key policy changes to bring the Act into line with modern technology and business practices. Um, for members of the House, I want to acknowledge uh, that business have been involved, Madam Chair, throughout the policy development stages of the bill and consulted on the draft. Um, if there was an exemplar bill that we would put up where stakeholders have been actively involved in its crafting, then I would definitely nominate this one. Customs will continue, Madam Speaker, to engage with business in developing regulations, customs rules and staff guidelines. The major policy changes uh, is in relation to greater information sharing uh, between customs and other government agencies, disclosing information on people and goods crossing the border for national security, law enforcement, uh, uh, public health and safety purposes. Information will also be able to be disclosed to implement or guide government policy, such as free trade agreements or to maintain regulatory regimes. To increase certainty about how customs must manage its information and circumstances and conditions under which information may be disclosed, the bill provides for information sharing agreements made at the ministerial level, domestic arrangements or chief executive level international arrangements. Agreements will specify protection for personal and commercially sensitive information and give a more efficient and transparent process for the sharing of information. Uh, Madam Chair, this, this bill attempts to be better for businesses. Um, it will be easier for traders, and, uh, traders to do business and to interact with customs. The bill also is uh, attempting to provide greater certainty around exercise liability greater certainty for the fuel industry around when exercise is due and collect additional $5 million per annum in Crown revenue, avoiding future litigation. 
It also clarifies when exercisable goods are subjected to the control of customs. It's also about a modern and flexible powers to protect New Zealand, where this bill confirms the majority of customs' existing powers while recognising privacy concerns. It also provides greater scope and flexibility to address smuggling and national security concerns. The bill also introduces a modern sanction framework. A range of penalties have been increased and made consistent across the bill and other legislation to ensure ongoing compliance. Um, Madam Speaker, in terms of opening statements, I think it's important that the members are also made aware that the Privacy Commissioner, Commissioner and the Law Society made submissions on many of the substantive policy changes in this bill, and these submissions have informed the Select Committee's report back to the House. So I now turn uh, the members' attention to theme one uh, in, in, in its title uh, of information disclosure. And in focusing on this particular uh, part of the bill, um, uh, just uh, for the benefit of members, uh, inform that the bill provides a coherent legislative frame framework for managing information while protecting privacy. Uh, this part of the theme, the bill, Madam Chair, I call the honourable minister. The Fire bill contain, uh, continues the information matching arrangements contained in the current Act, and which are working well. Uh, the the permit, permitted information matches relate to matters such as student loans, fines, enforcement, and ah, child support. Yeah. Any information disclosure agreement made by customs under the new provisions must be consulted with the Privacy Commissioner prior to it being approved by the relevant ministers within domestic government and, or the chief executive international and agreements with the private sector. It is also about sensitive personal information, such as the passenger name record data and biometric information, can only be disclosed under restricted circumstances. To increase accountability and transparency about how customs must manage its information, the bill provides for agreements with other government agencies, including for direct access to customs information, to be made at the ministerial level. Domestic arrangements the Privacy Commissioner will have active oversight. Greater information disclosure by customs to other government agencies will contribute to national security, law enforcement and public health and safety. The bill retains the ability for the current Act for Customs to disclose information to overseas authorities under a formal written agreement. Checks and balances are written into the agreement. The bill also retains the ability from the current Act for Customs to disclose information to overseas authority outside of a formal written agreement. This ability is restricted to the limited range of functions of the overseas authority and the type of information that can be disclosed. This form of information disclosed is necessary to meet operational considerations when the trade and trade flows between New Zealand and the other country are not sufficient to warrant a formal written agreement. The, committees, uh, the Select Committee considered, in their view, how best to balance the need for transparency in the collection, use and disclosure of information with parliamentary oversight. I want to acknowledge the work of the Select Committee and, of course, the officials to have brought this bill to the stage. I look forward to the contribution from the House. I call the Honourable Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be able to participate in the debate on the information disclosure aspects of this uh, customs and excise bill. Um, I, um, I intend to speak uh, with um, some particularity to clause 293, but before I do that I would like to make some general statements about uh, the information disclosure aspects of this bill, because obviously our, our customs service uh, has the power to um, collect an enormous quantity of information and data, uh, not just about um, goods and, and items that cross our border, but about people as they cross our border. And um, it, is, it is a rich source of information, uh, and it is appropriate um, that the government um, judiciously make that information available 
for other purposes. Uh, but it is, but it is certainly um, incredi incredibly important that it is that judicious. Judicious is the key word here. Uh, that we must take extreme care and caution with the information that is gathered about people and how that information is shared with other government agencies, with, with the private sector, and, and how that information is used. And I, it is, I, I believe that, um, that this, these aspects of this bill warrant significant scrutiny by Parliament. Uh, it, may, it may appear to some members that this is uh, a reasonably non-controversial. There's certainly uh, agreement across the House uh, about these aspects, but I think it, it is our duty as representatives of the New Zealand public to ensure that we scrutinise this bill closely, given the nature of the, of the powers uh, that, this, um, that, that this legislation um, provides to not just uh, the Customs Service but other, but other government agencies and our ability to use the information that we collect about people. For instance, information that is collected by um, the Customs Service can be used um, in the administration of student loans um, uh, Act, yeah, um, personal information about people uh, to be able to enforce aspects of uh, that legislation. It was considerably more than two minutes to go, I can assure you, gentlemen. Um, uh, it, it, al it also can be used in the recovery of um, financial support under the Child Support Act. Uh, it can be used in um, uh, verifying people's benefit entitlements. So very personal and private information. Uh, being used, yeah, absolutely appropriate uses, uh, but it's very important that we as a parliament are satisfied uh, that uh, this legislation is carefully crafted and able to ensure that we protect uh, people's privacy and we use that information appropriately. As I said, I, I wish to speak um, particularly uh, to clause 293, which um, deals with the direct access to information uh, for other purposes, other, other than the specified purposes um, that other clauses relate to. Uh, and this allows for um, government agencies to share information um, that uh, supports the detection, investigation, prosecution and punishment of various offences, uh, the detection, investigation uh, of suspected or actual terrorist acts or the facilitation of terrorist acts, protection of national security, uh, the processing of international passengers, protection of border security, protection of public revenue and the protection of public health and safety. And obviously, as uh, Minister for Immigration, um, I have um, considerable interest uh, in the, this information sharing ability. As, um, as, as Minister, I am regularly briefed uh, on enforcement action that is uh, taken by, or act action, rather, rather than enforcement action, action that is taken by our border services uh, to ensure the integrity of, of our border, to ensure the integrity of our immigration system, uh, and to, um, to ensure that, um, that people who uh, wish to attempt to enter New Zealand for, uh, for unscrupulous purposes or who are unable uh, to verify the validity of their intentions to, uh, for, for trying to enter New Zealand. Um, are able to be, in some cases, turned away or are able to be processed in an appropriate manner. Now, the ability to do that is, of course, incredibly and heavily reliant on the ability to gather data from various sources uh, about, um, about those people who, Madam Chair... Uh, the Honourable Ian Lees Gallagher. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, the, uh, it is heavily reliant on the ability to uh, collect uh, that information uh, and so the ability to collect and share that information is important, but it is, as I say, um, uh, vital that we have the right protections in place. So I am pleased to see uh, that the Select Committee saw fit to elevate the responsibility for entering into these types of data sharing agreements uh, from the chief executive level to the ministerial level. We, as ministers, as elected members of parliament, uh, have that accountability to the people of New Zealand. 
in a much greater way that even a chief executive, as senior as they are, as great, as great their level of accountability that they have, their, their levels of responsibility, two members heading off to a leadership meeting, I think, uh, um, the, um, it is important that it's actually the elected officials, the, the elected representatives, uh, who are able to uh, enter into this um, type of arrangement. Also important uh, that the privacy uh, commissioner uh, must be consulted. It's not, it's not, this, is not a, this is not an option for ministers entering into these agreements. Uh, the privacy commissioner must be consulted and ministers must have regard uh, to any comments received from the privacy commissioner on the proposed agreement. Again, I think in the 21st century, uh, when people's data is one of the most um, sought after commodities um, that are available in the 21st century, uh, I think it's incredibly important that um, we make sure that those safeguards uh, are included in there. Uh, the, the legislation also uh, prescribes uh, what, the, what these written agreements between ministers uh, must include. Uh, such as which databases may be accessed, the particular types of classroom information that may be accessed, uh, and, and importantly, the purpose for which that information can be accessed. And we have seen this in the past, previous governments, uh, that have been a little loose with, the, with the, the purpose for which they are using information, um, perhaps have, frankly, um, uh, uh, they, they have misused uh, and abused the, the, um, the access to information uh, that we have as a parliament and, and as a government. Um, and it is important that uh, the um, exact purpose for which information uh, can be shared, for which that, ac that information can be accessed, is set out um, in those agreements and that we don't have creep beyond what um, those specified purposes are. Um, if once a, you know, an agreed purpose is set in place, if it is determined that maybe uh, it would be useful for the government, that there is a, that there is a genuine and useful reason for going beyond um, the purposes that are agreed in those initial agreements between ministers, then ministers need to come back to the table, um, set out that new purpose, uh, work with the Privacy Commissioner to make sure that that is um, a reasonable and sensible purpose, because we, we cannot allow information to be used incorrectly or inappropriate by, you know, by people who are in a position of significant, um, significant power. Um, the, uh, those agreements must also set out how the information is uh, how it's to be accessed, um, the designations of, per, uh, of the people within the government agency who, who are, um, will be able to access those databases, the way uh, that the records uh, that are to be kept, safeguards to, that are to be uh, applied, etc. So this is all about making sure that we have the appropriate level of oversight, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, appropriate safeguards in place uh, to ensure that where this information is being, is being shared, it is for the specific purposes laid out in the Act. You know, the, act, the, act is, the, the Act is actually um, quite precise in terms of um, the exact reasons that this information can be shared. I think that is, um, that is incredibly important, and I think the, Im the improvements that have been made, uh, with, or the changes that have been made by the Select Committee um, do improve the bill, and they do go a long way um, to protecting the privacy of, of individuals. So, um, Madam Chair, uh, I, um, with those comments on this specific part of, uh, the, of the bill, uh, of the aspects of the bill that uh, deal with information disclosure. I'm, I'm happy to conclude my contribution there, uh, but I suspect that other members have considerably more to, make, to say on this part of the bill. Uh,